What is going on guys? This is Exclusive Designs here with a very nice tutorial coming for you. So, if you have seen my other video, the ABR Drummer intro, how once the C4 explodes the actual two eyes from Black Ops 2, how the text drops down in a very smooth way, I'm going to show you guys how to do that and I'll also add some really cool things on how to make manual global illumination if your computer's too slow and I'll also show you how to use an exploding effect that makes your intro really nice. So, let's get started. First off, what you want to do is you want to insert your text and label it something. Right, that's what I'm going to label mine, something. Make the depth 150 centimeters. Set the alignment to middle. And add some fillet caps if you wish. I normally do this and I just set it to 2 and then the steps to like 7. So um, it'll get a nice glow on the actual text since it's rounded. And then what you want to do is you want to make your texture. I'm just going to do a very basic texture. I'm just going to say blue today. I'm going to make it about 150 and then a little bit on the green. And now I'm doing purple. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to lower the specular a little bit since I don't like specular. Since it kind of just irritates me. So I'm going to lower that down a bit. And then I'm going to go to basic and then check reflection. Add the brightness of the reflection to about 35%. Go to texture, select that, and click Fresnel. Or Fresnel. I, it's pronounced Fresnel, but people will know it as Fresnel. Set the mix strength to 35%, the same as the brightness of the reflection that you used. Uh, and then what you want to do, obviously drag that onto your text. So, and then go to your tag and set the projection to cubic. Duplicate your text just for now, you'll know why later, and you want to set one of the texts, the duplicated one, to exploded, explosion, or something like that, and you want to rename the first one original, something like that. You want to have your original text selected, go to MoGraph, Effector, and select Plane, and it'll rise your text. If you don't, no, you'll want it risen later, so I just put it at zero for now, and then add rotation or scale. You can mess with these different effects later. I normally just use rotation and scale. But you want to go to Fall Off, select the shape, and click it as Box. Then you want to stretch out your box to the actual length of the, the actual length of the text by using the outer ones or you can manually do it through size so let's just say 500 set the height to about 200 and this one is 150 actually I'm going to set it to 200 so it's out of my text and then you want to go to parameter increase the height preferably so it's out of the scene like that and you want to add some rotation to it, give it a nice little effect, mess around with that, just randomly place it, screw around with that. You can also change the scale. I honestly consider that weird because some of them will be large, some will be small, and it makes it kind of odd, so I normally don't do that. And, um, here, uncheck that so it's out of the way. You want to have your plane effector actually larger so the text isn't showing. You want to make the red box a little bit larger so you can't actually see it. And you want to have that checked at zero from the keyframe. And then go to about 80, I guess. And then drag it away from the scene. Keyframe that. It is a bit fast, so if you notice it's not very smooth, it's kind of rough. Then what you want to do is you want to um, decrease the actual size of it, make it a little bit smaller so it's a lot more smoother but um then what you want to do is you want to have that so once it's keyframed if you play it through it's a very nice effect kinda fast you can mess around with a little effects through that but for now I will not then what you want to do is you want to add a camera and since this camera is not even I'm just gonna go to the render settings and set my width to 1280 and height to 720 real quick so it's a nice 720p quality and you want to be selected into the camera 
drag it back a little bit so when you go to frame zero all you see is nothing you want to be facing down on it so when you're looking up you don't see the actual text you want to keyframe on it and then go to where the text completely lands so that will be at about 65 and then go back 20 more frames and drag this camera back here so you can see the front of the text and it'll be back in from a top view so you can get a nice glare on it so something like that keyframe it so you get a nice little camera movement as it moves with the text it'll come around and it'll be right there then what you want to do is you want to actually make this text right here explode this actual exploded text to will explode so you want to select that text go to plugins and Throusy 1.22 r12 mines r12 because I haven't found an r14 version yet I'm just using the one transfer from my old um, cinema 4d you can download this at a link um, nitro4d.com I'll have it in the description down below so you want to select Throusy add an amount of pieces let's say 15 and then select a random seed and hit break now this can go from 10 seconds to a minute, minute and a half depending on how many pieces you use or how large your object is I normally just do 15, 20 about that and then I select the random seed so it's not the same seed every single time and it, auto, it also randomizes the angles and yeah it's pretty much it um, you can actually delete those if you want to do this, which I did not think about doing this earlier you can actually, you want to have the text selected with two different, you want to have two of these on it you want to drag it on twice or have a different color on the inside because it puts a color on the outside and the inside so I didn't think about that so if when it breaks if you notice like here if I play it through you'll notice the gray on the inside but yeah so what you want to do is you want to have these in a null so you go to create object null drag these underneath the null as a child minimize it and name it as exploded and then as you go through the actual frames it'll see that and the something coming down so what you want to do is right before this you want to have um, the exploded text you want to have all these selected and you want to go to um, the actual null sorry you want to go to coordinate and have it at zero for the scale all of them at zero and you want to keyframe it you also want to have the actual collision tags unabled so you want to have that keyframed as well and then you go to the actual frame and you want that enabled so you check it in another keyframe and you'll also want this one to be shown so what you'll do is you'll have all of these selected again or the null, god sorry <laughs> you have the scales all at one and you'll keyframe that and <laughs> more keyframing you go to the original and at 61 you want this to be completely at zero and keyframe that I know this is an odd way of doing this but when you play it through you'll see both text ooh sorry you also want to go back to 60 before the actual things at zero and set them to one so you can actually well see the text so when you go through it'll play the text will drop you won't see the actual change and then you'll see this text explode it's not a very nice explosion right now but what you want to do is you want to select all of the tags go to collision and add some bounce I'd say about 125, that is a basic one when you're doing your in midair. You can mess around with friction, collision, noise later, but this is just for basic. You have that and it explodes outwards. It's a really nice explosion. Also, what you could do, you could add a floor. And then go to Tags, Simulation Tags, and add a collider body. This will allow the actual objects to bounce on the floor, but since the floor is too high up, I'm going to have to drag it down and then play it through and it'll bounce but it's a 
kind of a large intense bounce so what I would suggest doing is lowering the bounce to about a hundred or no I'm gonna go 110 110 seems like a better number and then you want to start it over play it from the scene it'll play it through and it'll explode have a nice bounce effect so when you render it out you'll notice you get a very bland type of color with a, a not too realistic reflection what you want to do is you want to go to your render settings you want to go to effect and add ambient occlusion and add the contrast from about 10 to 15 I normally just do 12 percent then you want to go to effect and add global illumination so now you also want to add a sky you can get that through the floor tab or you can get it from going to create and physical sky or environment and it'll be right there so now when you render it out you have the skylight on the scene and it will do global illumination unfortunately global illumination, uh, global illumination takes quite a bit of time because it makes the shadows and the lighting more realistic so it can take it can range from a minute to two minutes for a frame and if you have a 200 frame project it might take a long time so if you don't have very good patience I will suggest a different idea and it's called manual global illumination well if it's not called that that's what I'm gonna call it manual global illumination so also if you notice right here the gray text on the inside doesn't have any reflection or nice shadowing that's because I don't have a texture on it so if you saw that you get a really nice reflection then what you want to do is if you can't use global illumination uncheck that select your spline oh, sorry select your spline tool go to top view the uh... sorry the freehand spline tool you want to zoom out so you're above your scenery and draw a type of squiggle across so you have a nice little line and then you want to have your tool selected I'd set the radius my opinion just to 100 so you can just select them all and have your spleen selected and just shift click over your entire line so you have all the dots selected then you want to go to your move tool go to front view and drag it up a little bit it's just so it's over the text and then you want to go back to top view drag it forward a little bit so it'll be like a light shining onto the scene then what you want to do is you want to insert a light and you want to go to MoGraph and then insert a cloner take the light go to general and set the intensity from about 20 to 40 I'm just gonna do 35 just because I'm not gonna have that many lights and you want to drag the light underneath the cloner then take the cloner go to object mode and change it from linear to object then what you want to do is you want to take your spline and drag it in the object tool then it will have your lights aligned along with the spline then what you want to do is you want to go down go to distribution and set it to even so the lights are evenly aligned with the actual spline tool and you can also increase the count you can have as many lights as you want I'm going to do about 10 which is where it was already out and also I'm going to raise my spline a little bit because I feel as if it's too low so I'm just going to raise that up and drag it to the right a little bit so I can get a right reflection and then render out your scene without global illumination on and it will drop your render times about 40 seconds a frame which is really nice especially if you're rendering at a minute and a half per frame so you don't have to wait as long for a 200 frame project and you still get a really really nice glowing reflection effect and shadows for a manual global illumination it's it's kinda basic but if you want really really nice um, if you want a really nice texture you want good shadowing and reflection I'd suggest going with the actual global illumination and just being patient because honestly that's what most people do they have to wait because if you're doing a 300 frame project and you're rendering out your scene it could easily go up to about eight hours ten hours but you have to be patient if you want top quality that's just my suggestion so I'm just gonna uncheck those go to global illumination 
and now you have a really nice effect. So if you play it through the beginning, you have your text drop in, and then the other one come in, explode, and you have a really nice effect. And if you want this slow-mo and you don't really have an editing program, what you could do when this explodes, go to Mode and select Project. And since this is R14, it's labeled as Project, but all the other ones, I'm pretty sure it's labeled as Document. Select that. And then you want to go to the Dynamics, I believe it is. Yes, Dynamics. And you want to go back a frame, keyframe the time scale. So like here, what I did was I have it so where it explodes. So like here, let me start it over and play it. So I have it go through, and right when it drops and hits the ground and explodes, I'm going to have it pause. So I did mine at about 84, that's where I had it. But I'm, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and then I go to 85, and I drop the time scale, say, 20%. And control click to keyframe it again. And so when you play through, it'll go at full speed the entire time. And it'll drop, and it'll go slow motion right here. And it'll have a slow motion effect. It's, it's a really nice effect, especially because you don't have to edit through it. And you can make your... Um, your video up to about 160 frames and so it'll go through get the nice explosion effect slow motion and what you could also do is you could take the camera and so right when it explodes like right here you can take your camera and like where it's keyframed go to about 160 the end of the thing and zoom it out a little bit so click on this arrow and drag it to the left so it's zoomed out so it's actually going outwards and keyframe it. So then when you actually play through, it comes in, it drops, explodes slow motion, and your camera drags out with it so you can see the whole thing. It's a really nice effect. You get some really good colors. You can make this longer, anything like that. And then finally, to finish this off, you want to go to your editing. Make sure your output from width is at 1280 and height is at 720 for a 720p quality if you want it better go 1920 for width and the height at 1080 and then if you want to have a better resolution I suggest doing about 125 and then take fame range all frames you can also make the anti-aliasing to best that will also drop render times seconds two seconds and then if you want this doesn't drop it too much you can add multi-pass and you can right click on it and you have all these different layers there's so many different things that can actually make it look so much better and if you hit add all which is what I normally do minimize that have your global illumination on and if you play through the scene and you go to a scene where there's a lot of action going on and you'll notice there will be a lot of render time right here so what you would do is you would render out that scene see what it would look like with top quality you could possibly do notice how long it takes and if you have the patience to wait that long do it if not don't because if you have a long scene and you have everything top quality and one frame one intense frame takes eight seconds you have about a hundred of those frames that's a lot of time and there's going to be some glitches too it could glitch out and it could take twenty minutes for a frame just by accident so like in theory you could be waiting eighteen hours for one video which would take forever so if you notice you get really really nice quality reflection on top of the text so yeah this has been exclusive designs guys i really hope you like this tutorial it took me a bit to think of how to do the manual global illumination thing but uh... hey if you like this tutorial please leave a comment and subscribe and like the video also i don't know if you guys know i've been having a twitter for a while so follow me on that the link will be in the description and yeah, this has been Exclusive Designs, guys. Peace out.